Peace be with you and also with you. Welcome to this eleventh is coming to you from the worshipping community of Long Ashton, the Barragurney and Flaxbourne. We've got the usual mix of story and song, craft and prayer for you to enjoy and to join in with. But let's begin with our first song. It's Thank You Lord for this new day. to do the right thing. Sometimes we find it difficult to be the person God wants us to be. Sometimes even when we make mistakes, good things happen. The story we're about to hear comes from the first part of the Bible, the Old Testament, and it's about a man who's supposed to be part of God's team, but who doesn't always get things right. This is Jonah. He was one of God's messengers thousands of years ago. Say hello to Jonah. One day, when out walking, Jonah heard his God calling. The people of Nineveh are quite appalling. They murder, cheat, lie, are horrid and mean. Go to Nineveh to tell them their deeds have been seen. And in 50 days time, their city will fall. All will be destroyed, the big and the small. Jonah said, right God, I'll do as you ask. But Nineveh, a huge city, was way out east, whose king was known to be a right nasty beast. Jonah thought God had given him the dirtiest task. He buttered his sandwiches, filled up his flask and ran off to Joppa, a town next to the sea. I'll catch a ship sailing west. Nineveh, me, no. Spain was the place where he wanted to be. On board, Jonah was having a snooze, but God had big plans for disrupting his cruise. Rough winds were blowing, waves beginning to rise. The terrified sailors feared for their lives. They fell on their knees, prayed to their gods, threw out their luggage to even the odds. But whatever they did, the ship kept on sinking, which got their poor captain to do some hard thinking. One person on board was still soundly sleeping. Time to discover the secrets he's keeping. Rough hands rudely shook Jonah awake. It was time for the runaway to tell his own tale. With the ship lurching dizzily in the eye of the gale, out spilled a story that made startled men cry. Jonah's disobedience might cause them to die. But Jonah said, no, he knew what to do. Chuck him overboard. That would save the crew. But the sailors were kind. The sailors weren't mean. Everyone on board ship was part of their team. So they got out their oars, tried to row to the shore. Yet with every heave, ho, oh, the waves rose more and more. We're sorry, Mr. Jonah. We're in such a mess. Our only hope is to do what you suggest. Please forgive us and save us, they prayed to the Lord, as with a huff and a puff, they hurled Jonah overboard. Jonah hit the water with a tiny wee splash, and the raging rushing storm went quiet in a flash. The sailors were saved, the seas calm, restored. They knew that their prayers had been heard by the Lord. With cheering and whooping, 
they went on their way. While Jonah was having a terrible day, he was sinking, drowning, meeting his demise, when God sent a fish of humongous size. The fish's mouth gaped wide. It cried, down in one. Then with a gulp, slurp and burp, Jonah was gone. Like the fish was slimy and wet. But all was not lost. He wasn't dead yet. This thought made Jonah do something quite funny. He got on his knees inside a fish tummy. He knelt in the goo, started praying and said, Lord, thank you for saving me. I thought I was dead. Now I'll admit that what I've heard is quite true. Saving the lost is what you like to do. While Jonah kept talking, God lent an ear. From Jonah, these words were good things to hear. Becoming a fish supper had changed Jonah's view, which gave God the chance to get him out of this stew. After three days, the fish felt a bit rough. It's no good, he roared. This meat, it's too tough. So out Jonah came, onto the sand. Oh, what a joy to be back on dry land. While Jonah brushed seaweed from the ends of his clothes and picked out the crabs from between his toes, he heard God's voice booming loud in his ear. Go to Nineveh, for this they must hear. They'll be destroyed for their wickedness. Tell them so. You are the one I've chosen to go. Jonah obeyed and made a start for the city. He saw it was big, dirty, not very pretty. He walked through the gates onto the main square, speaking God's message to those he found there. Forty days more and Nineveh will be dead. And he turned tail and ran, feeling much dread. Jonah's whispered words sped right through the town. From the poorest to the richest, to the king in his crown. Every one of them heard. They believed it was true. They pestered their king. What should they do? Saying sorry to God, said the king, is a must. And to prove it, we shall sit in the dust. We'll stop eating and drinking, wear rags for our dress. Do the same for our animals, because they matter no less. If we pray hard to God and give up being bad, perhaps all these actions will then make God glad. They did all their king asked. They were quiet for days, making God smile to see them quit their evil ways. As they sat in the dust wearing rags instead of fashion, God's heart overflowed with love and compassion. So the people's repentance filled God with pure pity. And despite Jonah's waywardness, God saved the city. I hope you enjoyed that story about Jonah. Now we're going to sing our next song. And it's also one that's got a bit of a watery theme. It's wide, wide as the ocean. Jonah was one of God's messengers. A special term for these messengers is prophets. Jonah thought that as a prophet, he was supposed to tell God's people, the Israelites, 
how God wanted them to live and how things would go wrong if they didn't follow God's instructions. Instead, he was to tell the Ninevites God's message. The trouble was, the Ninevites, people from the city of Nineveh, were the enemy of Jonah's people, the Israelites. Jonah wasn't going to give his enemies the chance to listen to God and to change their bad ways, so he runs away. He ends up on a ship that is supposed to be going to Spain. Spain is in the opposite direction to Nineveh. The sailors in charge of the ship are from countries all around the world and they each have their own gods to pray to. Even though Jonah goes to sleep while the storm is raging and isn't very helpful, by the time he is tipped overboard and the storm ceases, the soldiers, all the sailors, soldiers or even the sailors perhaps, all now believe in the God of the Bible. Jonah has helped people find God without even knowing that he has. It can't have been very pleasant being inside a fish's stomach, trying to avoid bits of jellyfish and the bones of past meals. But it gives Jonah time to think and to understand that if God wants him to do something, he better do it. By the time the fish coughs Jonah back up onto dry land, Jonah knows that to be the person God wants him to be, he's got to give the message God entrusted him with to the people of Nineveh. God gives him a chance to try again. So he goes to the city, but he's still not very happy with the idea. The Bible tells us that Nineveh is a big city. It takes three days to walk across it. But Jonah only walks for a day. He doesn't even get to the city centre. And he only gives his message once to the few people who are around him. Then he runs away again. However, the people he speaks to listen. They pass his message on to others, whom the whole city knows, even the king. They take Jonah's message seriously. They change. They stop being bad. They're sorry for the things they've done wrong. They want the chance to try again. And God listens. God listens and God does the one thing Jonah wants, didn't want to happen. God stops from punishing the people of Nineveh for being so bad and gives them the chance to try again to be good. So despite all the mistakes he has made, Jonah has done what God asked him to do and Jonah has become the person God wanted him to be. Now has there been a time when you've been scared to do something right because it might help people you didn't like? What happened? Have you been given a chance to try again when you've made a mistake? What did you do? How did it feel? If you were Jonah in the story, how do you think you might have behaved? So today we're going to make a lovely fish or whale. The Bible says it's a big fish, but we often notice the story of Jonah and the whale. And we've made this whale so that its mouth should close up a bit on Jonah inside. It's got a, an articulated hinge. And there's Jonah inside. And there are some Bible texts. And we'll tell you all about this as we make it. So you'll have to look online and you'll find an instruction sheet and a template. The template I'll come to in a moment. From the instruction sheet, it says what you need. And what you need are the template, you need the paper plates. You need three paper plates. You need some scissors, so you'll need adult supervision with this. And something like glue dots, sticky tape. What else have we got? String, there's a bit of string, or threads better than string. Um, crayons, pens, something to, to colour in with. And if you've got them, two googly eyes. I don't mean you, I mean the craft googly eyes. These, But if not, we can draw the eyes on. And these paper fasteners, some people call them brads, they're little brass or metal things, and then you use them to fasten paper and make it so that it's got a hinge. I'll show you those in a moment. So how do we start? We start by taking two of the paper plates. And on the eating side of the paper plate, you're going to colour this in, in the colour you think the inside of a fish is 
we've gone for, well, a salmon pink, I suppose. We've gone for a nice pink inside of a fish. You've got to think inside of a fish. And so that's what you do on both, the inside of the, both, on two of the plates. There you go. And on the other side, now you can decorate your fish or your whale the colour you want it to be on the outside. So we've gone for a sort of whaley blue. You could go like the fish over there with lots of different colours and scales, but that's on that outside. On the outside there, and you then get round to sticking the eyes on, and the eyes go about, about there. So once you've done that, you fold your plates in half, not a big fold, but you fold them in half. And so you've got your eye parts, which I like to draw some on. You've got some eyes. There you go. There, so you've got one folded and the other folded. Let's just fold that in half like so. And what you're going to do is you're going to take them and fit them together so that they create a hinge. So to do that, you need to get your brad, and you're going to have to pierce the side of both plates. So you need to pierce it where there's plenty of room. Now, in a traditional manner, here's one we prepared earlier. So this one, you can see the brad is through the side there. It's roughly in a line with that eye, and it's through the side. It's through, gives you plenty of space for it to go through and be fur, and it opens and closes like that. Now, once you've done that, I think it's time for you to create the next bit, which is, and you can see on this one, he's got a tail and he's got some fins on the side, fins and the tail. Now, the easy way to do this is to use your third paper plate. It's ridged and the ridges look like the fins or the tail. So you just draw a tail. So you just draw it on and you want to make it quite long. You might want to cut a V shape in it. And you just make, you draw, draw it on really simply. You need it to be quite long because you're going to stick it inside the paper plate. You're going to stick your tail in there. So you just draw it on and you just cut it out and you can colour it in before you cut it out or after you cut it out. And you cut it out and you cut out a little bit of tail shape. You can just do a V or make it more fantasy. And that's that one. And then you do the same for some fins. So you just draw your fins on. Again, they need a bit of length and they can just be trying, almost triangles. You need a bit of length on those so that they can attach inside. I probably haven't got them quite right. I'm only going to cut one out. So you end up with a very holy plate. And then you stick. Probably needs a bit of a curve. Oops, a bit of a bend. So you probably fold it in half and you stick it with your glue dots or your tape into the back of your whale and then you fix these. How oh, we fix these on? You fit. Oh, we cleverly fix them on. In fact, I've got this upside down. You can fix them on up that there. That's it. I've got it on upside down. Put the tail there. Put your fins under there. Stick them on, and you're halfway there to getting your fish. In fact, the fish is done, but the rest of it isn't quite finished. If you've made a whale. You can go and make a tube of paper and with a couple of flaps on the side and some plumy bits, just curl them, cut them and curl them. And you can stick that on top. And that's like the water spout coming out of the whale when it breathes. Fishes don't have those, whales do. So what's next? Well, it's Jonah. You need Jonah and you need the little fishes that are inside. And that's where your template comes into place. So if you can print this out on thin white card, that will be fantastic. That's the best thing to do. Print it out on thin white card, cut out Jonah, colour Jonah in, fold Jonah in half, stick the two halves together 
and then turn the flaps down so that Jonah will sit on the ground. So that's Jonah. And then the fish, the fish have got some words on them um, that I can't quite read at the moment, but they've got some words from the Bible on them. And they say different things. And um, they give you some texts from Jonah to look up in the Bible. And if you cut the fish out and colour those in and then get a string, get your little bit of thread and some sellotape or glue dots, you can stick the fish inside so they're hanging as if they're just being swallowed by the big whaley fishy thing. And there you go. And Jonah can go inside and Jonah gets swallowed. And that's, I think, is all you need for this craft. Have fun doing it. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to tidy this table up a bit. And whilst we do that, we're going to have the next song. And it's not about fish. It's actually about hundreds of sparrows. both going to come up on the screen and you can pray along with me. Dear God, sometimes we feel frightened or scared or just not strong enough to do the things we know are right. Help us to listen to you like Jonah listened in the end so that we might do all the things that will make us good people and help the world to become a better place. Amen. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So now we pray God's blessing on each and every person watching. May God, our creator, draw us closer to each other and to heaven. May Jesus, God's son, feed us with his love and care. May the Holy Spirit guide us and inspire us when we feel lost. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for being part of this Elevenses. Next month there will be a new team talking to you, and it may be that Elevenses is back in church. Mary Jane and I have very much enjoyed sharing these songs and crafts, stories and prayers with you. May God's love always shine in your lives. Amen.